a very good afternoon to everyone joining us for this session today i parika gupta extend my heartiest greetings and a very warm welcome to our esteemed panelists faculty members and all our dear participants to the third to the fourth session of international conference on mediation 2022 today's session would be on the role of mediation in family and matrimonial dispute before we begin I would like to introduce our respected moderator for the session, Professor Kiran Gupta, Faculty of Law, University of Delhi. With over two decades of teaching experience in family, succession, and property law, as well as law of torts, her valuable insights will further the objective of today's session to have a constructive discussion on mediation. It is an honor to have you here with us, ma'am. With this, I request you to formally welcome the panelists. Over to you. thanks parika it's my great privilege to welcome with uh, gratitude all our guests today the chair of the the as we know that this conference was organized is organized two day conference is organized by faculty of law university of delhi in collaboration with delhi school of public policy and governance which is an institution of excellence of university of delhi and the mediation committee of the supreme court of india i welcome you all for this fourth technical session of today's conference we have with us a catena of or you you can say a very good speakers the honorable members of the bar and bench who will chair co-chair and are our special speakers honorable justice sanjay kerol who is the chief justice of the patna high court is our respected chair in today's session honorable justice sandeep mehta judge rajasthan high court is our esteemed co-chair honorable justice anjuni palo judge madhya pradesh high court is the respected co-chair and we have three special admirable guests special guests today miss iram mazi who is the director institute indian institute of arbitration and mediation and she is also an iimi certified mediator we have miss uma ramanathan who is a mediator and managing trustee with fcdr we have dr pramila acharya who is an advocate as well as a mediator trainer state coordinator of rajasthan i extend my warm welcome to all of you and the other participants here in this session friends we are going to discuss role of mediation in solving the disputes relating to family and matrimonial matters as far as we know that as far as family law is concerned it is not uniform in india each religious community has its own law and the tribal communities are governed by their customary law family disputes were rare in earlier times the reason being that whenever a dispute arose the members of the family the elder members of the family they themselves resolved it by conciliation or by mediation so as far as family and matrimonial disputes are concerned mediation is not something which is new to india it has been happening since long and it is generally happened by the elder members of the family but since the family system is changing in the society due to this change in the society the families more and more families are getting nuclear families husband and wife along with a child or maybe no child living together both of them quite young not able to adjust with the uh, views of each other it is just a question of uh, adjustment and some minor 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 disputes they become so major because there is nobody to uh, to 
bring out reconciliation or to mediate between them in these disputes, which resulted in big matrimonial problems ruining their life. We, we earlier had a very good system of mediation, but now because of all these problems, we need to have, you can say, a formal kind of mediation in family matters. As far as family law is concerned, it is a very different branch of jurisprudence. It is a jurisprudence in itself. To solve a family dispute, just the knowledge of family law is not sufficient. We have to apply the law, we have to apply the sociology, and we have to use the psychology also, because these matters are very, very emotional matters. We just can't discuss this way or that way, because it is a question of breaking the marriage. And the object of the law is not to disrupt but to conserve marriage and marital relations because it is useful marriage marriage is an institution which is a very useful institution for the society society cannot survive without the institution of marriage and it is because of all these things it is a very different branch of jurisprudence requiring different kind of practice different kind of decisions different kind of emotions the person deciding the case, the judge deciding the case, or the person acting as a, as a mediator has to judge the emotions of the parties and try to reconcile those problems. Try to bring them on the table, discuss their problem, and solve them so that the mar marital relation will be conserved. Otherwise, it will be a disaster for both of them it will be a disaster for the families, members of both of them, and it will be a disaster for the children of the marriage. We call mediation as a part of alternate dispute resolution, as a method of one of the process of alternate dispute resolution. But in my opinion, it is the only effective method of dispute resolution. If we go to, a, if we have a family dispute and we go to the lawyer, that small dispute will become a bomb and will explode and break the marriage. We need mediators who can console these parties, who can advise these parties, these persons who have small minor differences which they could have easily, uh, easily adjust. Or if they are not able to adjust, it is clear that they will never adjust it. Let the marriage break without any enmity between the parties. So all that is required, that is the need of the R. And that is how the mediators play a very important role in conserving or peacefully disrupting the marital union. As far as our Hindu law is concerned, presently we are governed by the Hindu court, Hindu Marriage Act. There is express provision in Hindu Marriage Act, Section 23, Subsection 2, which provides that the courts must try reconciliation before deciding the case. Whenever they find that there are chances of reconciliation between the parties, they should refer it to the reconciliator. The Muslim law is not a codified law, but if we study it, even in case of pronouncement of talaq, there is a need that there must be attempts of reconciliation between the husband and the wife. And if that attempt fails, then only the, pronounced, uh, the divorce can be pronounced by the husband. Now that we have Family Courts Act, which makes it mandatory for the family court. And you know, all the, uh, the, all the matters relating to family are fall within the jurisdiction of the family courts now. Uh, exclusive jurisdiction of the family court. And before taking up the case, it is mandatory that case must be referred for mediation and conciliation. And in family courts, almost in all the family courts, a mediator is attached and that mediator is appointed by the district legal services authority. And they try their best to 
bring the reconciliation between the parties and if it can't be bring the marriage can't be saved or there may be a dispute relating to maintenance or custody of the parties if they the, the parties don't want to settle uh, then it, it, the mediator has to file a report in the court and the, then the court will decide the case so without speaking much since we have such distinguished speakers with us we would like to hear you and i would like to invite our first speaker madam inam mazid who is the director in the indian institute of arbitration and mediation and who is also a certified mediator to enlighten us about her views relating to role of mediation in family matters now the virtual floor is yours ma'am thank you so much kiran and uh, thank you so much uh, justice sanjay justice anjuli uma ma'am pramila and uh, mr ashutosh for inviting me especially so thank you everyone for inviting me since it is a very good topic so uh, as uh, kiran you have mentioned rightly that these are the uh, you know disputes which are highly emotionally charged disputes so i would like to say that the scope of mediation if we see in india is very very promising and for bringing up inequitable treatment in a sense of fairness and justice in the society mediating skills especially unbiased communication skills and influential bargaining strategies are to be engaged conflicts cannot be averted it can be resolved and conflict can be turned into an opportunity but every relationship goes its ups and down and especially in matrimonial disputes there are a lot of ups and down because we in this session we are discussing about the role of mediation in family matters and matrimonial matters so i'll be telling you the high, uh, i will be highlighting the benefits of mediation in these kind of disputes and then i'll be discussing one or two my you know uh, my experience in my mediation where i have done uh, two cases which are highly emotionally charged mediations and then certain recommendations and suggestions for the panelist and others to look into it and to bring a road map regarding the uh, such kind of disputes so as i told you that every relationship goes its ups and downs and uh, if you talk about divorce or reconciliation see these both are very very personal and common phenomenon globally either it is reconciliation or separation mediation plays very very important role if parties are going for divorce and then it can be analyzed as a decision to leave the partnership and end the marriage so however they can be preceded by a long process of ending the relationship there may be lot of other things which can be you know uh, subsequently some other disputes may be attached to one main disputes and which can include estrangement from the spouse stress conflict and even violence can be involved so such disputes involve high high emotions other spirals along with other connected matters so according to robert where behavioral disorder in children of strained marriage face difficulties in dealing with the opposite sex and su suffer poor academic performance are often in the long term nature which can be a disaster which which lead to family if we will not able to handle these disputes timely and uh, you know uh, with with the with, with in, in litigation if we are taking this dispute in litigation so we can counter all these aspect if matter will go for mediation so if one dispute like uh, you can say uh, a divorce petition or divorce uh, dispute or the family uh, matter or the matrimonial dispute so the kind of other disputes attached to it may be that the parties want to go for the decree of the nullity of a marriage or declaration of the validity of the marriage or the status in the uh, matrimonial status of of any person suit for proceeding between the parties to a marriage concerning concerning properties of the parties or either of them suit of property declaring uh, proceeding or the declaration of legitimacy of any person or the suit proceeding for maintenance guardianship custody access to minor all these things see all these are connecting disputes which one disputes and if you see if is you able to settle one dispute it will be you will be able to settle all these dispute all these issues in one go so mediation will decrease the burden of the court we we only 
calculate that one case has been decided, but one case has been settled. No, it is not one case always when it we talks about matrimonial disputes. It always a bundle of cases, bundle of disputes, bundle of emotions, which we settled in one go that is called in matrimonial disputes. See, all disputes are very, very closely collected, connected. And technically, in mediation, as I told you, four or five disputes we can settle in one go. Now, if we talk about the pre-litigation mediation, pre-litigation mediation is the way forward in this regime. As we know, at the case, case Srinivasan Rao, where the Supreme Court discussed the idea pre-litigation mediation in the context of family disputes, court acknowledged that the dispute arise due to trivial reasons that are solved by pursuing litigation. It was also observed that the data, uh, you know, the data from the Delhi District Court shows that chances of successful resolution uh, are higher when the party approach to mediation at earliest instance, not wasting the time in the court, and then you will be going for the mediation, then it's, it may take a lot of years and years. So pre-litigation mediation is a way forward in this regime for the mediation. And uh, even if you see that uh, the B.S. Krishna Murthy case, in this Justice Markanda Karju, uh, uh, held that the lawyer should advise their clients for mediation, especially, especially when the dispute is family in nature. Otherwise, the litigation will go on for year and year, decades and decades, which will be detrimental for both the parties. So there, these are the benefits uh, which, which, uh, which uh, you know, in one go, you can resolve all these disputes and all. And uh, But these benefits can be accrued to you and you can be able to get the fruit of this of, of this mediation in the family disputes only when the mediators are trained to handle the emotions well because these disputes are highly charged emotions and just a basic training after acquiring a basic training it may not be possible for you to handle the emotions effectively because if you take the commercial disputes in one hand and uh, uh, matrimonial disputes in one hand skills are required for that but emotional handling of emotion emotions and treat parties with empathy is something which you which you need to learn and you need to have extra uh, you know uh, edge of, of, on that and uh, because these dis dispute required certain is special skill set to handle i i can share you one of my case when i was doing mediation in uh, delhi high court so there was a dispute uh, where both the party they were having uh, a partnership and this case was having two aspects, commercial aspect also and relationship aspect also. So they were having a partnership. They were a, they both were partner in one business and they fall in love and they perform marriage. After this marriage, the girl was from different faith and boy was from different faith. They converted into one faith and they performed marriage. After that, they had a baby. After baby, three of them converted into another uh, religion, the religion of uh, one's spouse. After some years, the husband converted back to another religion. See, this was a change of religion for one religion to other religion, another religion to other religion. And then that dispute came before me that how to resolve this dispute, what would be the religion of the children, child, and how the child will be brought up, what would be the custody of this child, how the business uh, uh, can be, you know, business issue can be resolved between these two parties. See, I get a goosebump when I tell you about this case because that case has two aspects. One is commercial and one is relationship. When we talk about the commercial, it was very, very easy to resolve just 50, 50 percent of the, uh, you know, they, they said, okay, 50, 50 percent, we are happy to have that. But when it comes to emotions, it required special skills. It required, you know, to treat the parties with empathy, with compassion and use different set of skills, you know, some sort of, uh, you may say, hypnotic languages or metamodel set and all. So it required a different, all together is because in one case I learned a lot and then the outcome was so so miraculous so so miraculous that no court can come up to that uh, outcome and uh, with this I learned a lot and I come to know that look same party having the same perception same mindset but the outcome for the two uh, and when they were on the two different aspects one is commercial and one is relationship issues they were completely different person all together completely different person when they were dealing commercial they were completely different person and when they were dealing emotions they were completely different persons and there the role of mediator is very very important because you have to be the navigator you have to be the navigator of their emotions if at one instance you are unable to handle their emotions well 
you may lead to disaster of the parties. We know that we have mediations. We know we have mediation cells. We have institutions and all. But the what is the most required thing is in this kind of situation that we need to have more skilled mediator. And um, one thing also I would like to tell you one uh, you know one example. See recently in the COVID days. Uh, uh, when I got COVID, so one person used to visit my place uh, for all the tests and all. He was very, uh, during that days, he become a family member, like, because every other day, all the family member were into the COVID. So he used to come for uh, having our test without any, uh, you know, inhibition and all. So uh, recently I called him and uh, he called me and he said that I'm uh, having some matrimonial issues and uh, uh, I'm going for mediation. I, I suggested him that should go for mediation because he had two years old uh, child. So don't, uh, you know, immediately go for a case and all. So go for mediation. But somehow because of my traveling and all, I could not assist him in the mediation. But last week only he came again to have my one test. And I saw, you will you will not believe, I saw he was having, he was, he wrapped, a, you know, a, what you called a, a handkerchief around his neck. But somehow that handkerchief, you know, got uh, displaced when he was talking to me. And I could see a, a very big mark on his neck. I said, what is this? And uh, he said, there was a fight and uh, my wife has strangulated me uh, with this. I said, but you went for the mediation. He said, yeah, I went for the mediation, but it was not successful. I said, why? Because the mediator was unable to understand the underlying interest. They were unable to understand underlying interest. I keep on saying they did not believe and situation become more, more worse when we came out from the room. So that's what I would like to say that we need to have a special skill set to understand the emotion of the parties. We cannot miss out on e any emotion in this matter. And um, and and if, if I say to all of you that there was a survey conducted in New York, they said, okay, suppose if there are, uh, you have to scale on 5% that how much negative you need uh, to stay in a matrimonial uh, you know, tie up or how much positive you need. So there was a different answer, but the answer is Marika? Yes, um, due to some technical glitch on ma'am's part, I would like to continue with this session. Nonetheless, it was a very comprehensive, holistic and solution-driven session drawn by ma'am. So, thanking you ma'am for taking the discussion forward. And now, I would like to welcome our special guest, Ms. Uma Ramanathan, to share her views on the topic. We humbly welcome you ma'am. Over to you now. Marika, before that, I would like to welcome Justice Sandeep Mehta, who has joined us just now. Welcome, sir. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> good evening. Um, Honorable Justice Carol, Justice Mehta, Justice Pali, and all the other uh, dignitaries here and people who have been patiently listening to all of us through the day. Uh, it's been a privilege uh, to uh, be called to express my views on this aspect. Especially when I was listening to the speakers from the morning, uh, starting from Justice Cole, of course, who's passionate about mediation, and who said, we have to think about different perspectives. To Geeta Ramseshan, who was talking about inequalities and inequities and all that. And uh, Madam Giribala Singh, who was talking about culture. And uh, Jawad and the rest of them talking about commercial aspects. So. You know, through the day when I was listening to it, what I thought was that ultimately, what is mediation? Mediation is building comfort. Mediation is building courage for the parties to make their own decision. Until now, they have not taken any responsibility. They have asked somebody else to take the responsibility of making a decision for their problem. They don't deal with their problem. They ask somebody else to deal with it. And that is why they are not happy. But in mediation, they have to take the problem in their hands weigh the possibilities and make a decision. And so they take own ownership over the decision. And that is why we say whatever agreement comes in mediation is a workable decision. I have always been fascinated by mediation by, I mean, people who know me know that I'm passionate about mediation, but 
you know, what has fascinated me is the behavior of parties. And recently, uh, in a couple of uh, sessions of training that I had to do, I was thinking about this. And I was thinking that though we talk so much about what are the roots of conflict and uh, behavior or perspectives and all that, ultimately, the three factors that really make up a conflict is personality, perspectives, and positions. It depends on the personality of the person. It depends on what kind of perspectives, as Justice Cole was saying, because how I appreciate something, how I see something, how I hear something uh, gives me an uh, interpretation. And based on my conditioning, based on how I assess certain things, my personality or uh, a challenge to my dignity, challenge to my respect, I try to be defensive. And so I feel that personalities and perspectives play a great role in putting up positions, that is, uh, setting up goals, uh, emotions that arise out of it, or the stand that I take when I am in disagreement with somebody. Recently, when I was reading something, I uh, it was very nice to see that the word dukkha that we normally use, we think it is sorrow or unhappiness or pain or something less. But apparently, Vatsayana has defined it as frustration of one's plans. And I think that uh, really summarizes what mediation and family and uh, matrimonial disputes is about. I just want to cite a couple of examples before I go into what I want to say. Uh, I remember there was a media family uh, a partition mediation of a prime property in Chennai. And uh, all the uh, siblings were very well placed. Like one is a commissioner, one is uh, the director and all that. And uh, this lady who had filed for partition, apparently when she was born, her father was told by the astrologer that uh, the horos because of her horoscope, something would happen to the father. And so she was given away to the cook with some money to be taken away from the family house. Actually, she was well-educated. She had married into a very good family in Bangalore. She was well-placed. But after the parents' death, she filed for partition. And when it was referred for mediation, the only thing she told me was, I don't want a share in the property. I want to be recognized as the daughter of so-and-so which had not, even her lawyer did not know why she had filed. And only when I started talking to her, I realized that. So these are things that come out in mediation. Their innermost concerns, their innermost, as um, Ram was saying, their underlying issues. What is it that really causes them that uh, pain, causes them that frustration of whatever they had? Uh, similarly, I remember there was a, I mean, I, I go to the other extreme where there was a custody matter between the father and the maternal grandmother, where the mother had died of a cerebral thrombosis. And they belonged to different faiths. So the grandmother was accusing the uh, son-in-law of not uh, having lived as a uh, as the person of that faith he had converted to. And so she had taken the child and gone away. Normally, I don't like children in the mediation center, but because the child was there and uh, just to keep her occupied, I gave her a few color pens and a paper and I said, just draw. I'm going to talk to your grandmother and your father. And she was sitting there drawing. And then when I looked at it, I found she had drawn a house. On one side, she had drawn a male figure. On another side, she had drawn an old woman. And I asked her, why did you do this? I mean, what is it? She said, I want both of them in my life. It was as simple as that. And nobody understood that. And, and, and if I had not asked a child to make the drawing, I don't know why I did it, but because I had asked the child to make the drawing, I realized what the child wanted. And I was able to take it from there. So I want to say that basically, I mean, these are just ex extreme examples. There have been examples where family fights over family businesses. And the eldest son says, when I was young, I was denied a chocolate and my youngest brother was given. Because of that, I will not give him to anything. I mean, it's as simple as a chocolate which was denied to him when he was age 10. Or at times, it will be a child, I mean, when the uh, parents were fighting over a divorce and about the property they had bought uh, when they were married. And I find the daughter, uh, accidentally, the mother said that uh, I need this house because uh, uh, my daughter has a padded room. Then I asked her why she said she's self-inflicting. Then when I spoke to the daughter, I found out that she had been sexually abused by the father. And so she was hurting herself because her mother wouldn't listen to her. And when I asked the mother, the mother said, I don't, I mean, I, uh, she was a bank officer. She said, I've taken loans and I need to repay. So I can't, I'll address that later. I need to worry about the financial angle. So even the lawyer at that point did not know what was a, a situation. So I'm just telling you these examples to say that there are so many concerns, so many anxieties that bother these people. And it is in their innermost uh, being, which may they may even not um, uh, be aware of. So how to engage them, how to bring them to that comfort level? 
if you look at it, of course, I said about personalities and um, you know perspectives. I think for what we have to understand is the mind state of the uh, mediator and the mind state of the uh, parties. As Iran was saying, that it's not just a 40 hours training that will equip us to uh, deal with these people. We need to be constantly aware. We need to constantly update. And we need to care for those people. Only if we are able to care for them, they understand that they can share their most concerns. And if um, looking at barely at what is mind states, I would say partly it is how we are habituated to thinking, our conditioning, our culture, how we interpret things. And more than that, although we say free will and evolution because we want to uh, make our own decisions, uh, we want the freedom to make our own decisions, ultimately it is because of this habit and the conditioning that we choose a certain kind of action. And so when we are talking to parties, we have to understand what are the layers that they have covered themselves with when they are presenting a particular narrative. Most of the time, they, they may know it is not the real narrative, but they want to believe in it because that gives them comfort. So. Uh, in a way, it is a kind of uh, recognition, uh, I mean, helping them to recognize uh, what is the situation. It is also helping them to uh, move beyond that, uh, beyond whatever is occupying them to the extent that they will have to uh, move beyond their comfort zone to see what is really hurting them. It's like asking a patient, uh, say a person has gangrene and the doctor says you have to get this limb amputated. Surely he's going to say, no, it's my hand, I want to save it. But then amputating that part may be better. But how do you make him understand? It's when the doctor explains what will happen. So somewhere along the line, uh, removing those layers and getting there and helping them to understand what are the possibilities. So this is totally multi-layered, much more than what is happening in other mediations. And uh, the kind of nurturing that the mediator has to do, it's not only really addressing the pride. We generally say, oh, they are egoistic. It's not just egoistic. Somewhere along the line, their plans have been frustrated, their pride has been hurt, their respect has been foiled. So somewhere they want, uh, I mean, the emotions that come out of it is because uh, they themselves don't know how to express how hurt they are. So unless we find out what has wounded them and um, what, uh, like in, uh, uh, apparently when I was reading uh, about mediations in China, they said, uh, usually, of course, even in our culture, we have that, of course, it's an Eastern tradition mostly, uh, it's a, that they have to respect their elders. So there it is more evaluative. And uh, if the elders make a particular suggestion, they accept it. And in a way, it is face saving. So we have to understand this nurturing by the mediator has to be to uh, address the pride that has been hurt, uh, to address the face saving that would be necessary, and to sort of respect where they are coming from, to understand why they are making that particular proposition. So. It is both for the mediator and for the parties, it is not only reflection of the act, it is reflection on the act also. So when we go back after mediation, it is good to reflect on whatever happened that day before we come to the next session to help them. And also ask them to reflect on whatever they have said so that they will be able to come up with some, uh, some suggestions or able to think about something which is different. So on the whole, I think mediation in matrimonial and family disputes, especially now, after uh, uh, the equal, especially for Hindus, after the equal rights for women have come about. See, there is a culture where the father, I mean, a lot is done for the woman when she gets married. And the brother has to keep doing for so many of the functions. So sometimes the families really cannot afford to, to split the property and give her an equal share. And uh, what, because of this, of course, I'm not saying that she shouldn't be done. But today, because of that, a lot of women have come out to file for partition. And because of it, the the relationship with their siblings have also been hurt. So to that extent, either in, because there are a lot of family businesses also where the women have a share. So we have to understand that there is some, uh, that what we do in mediation and family and matrimonial disputes has to be to balance, not just the power, balance the relationship and balance the kind of action that they can take. Uh, we also have to see whether the collaboration is authentic. Whatever they are trying to do is meaningful to further the relationship. We also has to have to help them to find out uh, how their projections are uh, conditioning them or making them interpret in a particular way or how their anxiety may be displaced or may have some reason and how they can overcome that. So all this sort of creates a chaos and how we move beyond that chaos to bring order is what the mediator does. And so I think 
basically what we uh, have to do in uh, matrimonial or uh, family mediation is today as a mediator as a person who takes responsibility to show a mirror to them to help them to move beyond uh, whatever is hurting them or frustrating them to help them understand that this is the situation or as jay krishnamurthy says this is what is so you have to understand what is the reality and move beyond that and to that extent uh we have to understand that uh, this engagement that is done by the mediator and helping the parties to uh, engage with the mediator and with each other has to involve not only understanding of the mindsets but also has to enable a constructive dialogue unless the dialogue is constructive they will not be able to understand the perspectives of each other and more important is once we understand the perspectives we'll be able to help them with how have they have to comprehend the particular situation or the relationship so uh, with einstein's e is equal to mc squared i think we can say it's uh, mind states plus uh, constructive dialogue and um, comprehension which will make engagement and um, that is a thought i would like to leave with all of you to say that is it enough just to be trained for 40 hours and to think that we are helping parties to uh i mean we are reaching out to parties to talk to them we need much more than that we need to understand the perspectives we need to understand we may differ with them but we may, we need to understand why they have those perspectives and we need to help them uh, to give them the comfort and the courage to move on so thank you thank you thank you madam thank you so much ma'am for taking this discussion forward and highlighting some very crucial points on the issue such as behavior personality and perspective of the parties which are integral parts for smooth mediation and constructive dialogue now i would like to invite our special guest dr pramila acharya to share her knowledge of the field we welcome you ma'am the virtual platform is yours thank you parika my warm good evening to all honorable chair honorable mr justice sanjay karol chief justice patna high court honorable co chair mr sandeep mehta judge rajasthan high court honorable shrimati justice anjula paulo judge madhya pradesh high court eminent speakers ma'am uma ramanathan and iram majid and all the participants who are joining us to this uh, conference in fact i am privileged to be part of this august gathering i am grateful to faculty of law university of delhi uh, delhi school of public policy and governance institution of eminence university of delhi and mcpc mediation and conciliation project committee supreme court of india and organization organizers of this conference actually uh, since morning i am uh, hearing such eminent speakers and with such great learnings i am i i, I still I, i can say that i am grateful to ashutosh ashutosh mishra sir who had given me this opportunity to be a part of this conference because i have learned a lot since morning and ma'am from uh, ma'am uma and ma'am iram majid i know they are my gurus and uh, what should i say about that but still they are they are uh, ma'am uma is scholars uh, great scholar in, uh, in mythology related to law and all and iram majid has such a great past experience in this field so i will not speak much on that because both the speakers have touched each and every topic each and everything in this so i will just say that uh, the topic the subject of this uh, session seems little uh, you know very interesting when we talk about material disputes it seems very interesting at least at the first blush however the fact remains that more you do such kind of mediations practically the more one realizes that it is the toughest form of mediation toughest form of litigation one has to be very 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 sensitive to handle these kind of mediation material disputes and uh, maybe reason ma'am has already explained that people are highly emotionally charged era marriage emphasize very beautifully on this that uh, in in these kind of matrimonial disputes these the family disputes people are always emotionally charged maybe any kind of emotion and we have to very carefully handle their emotions very sensitively because we we can't we can't uh, you know touch them directly we can't touch their emotions directly we have to be very uh, you may we have a framework we should have a very good framework to acknowledge to address their emotion what they want to what they want to uh, come up with because it's it's very very easy to say that go for divorce go for section 9 go for custody but when we handle disputes 
in mediation on these aspects i will explain it with a uh, with, with, with a short example of my own mediation uh, in early 20, 30s uh, husband wife were fighting with each other with all blame games and all all claims counter claims and all everything was going on and i was at the end i was not able to uh, i was i just realized that i have to refer back this mediation to uh, honorable court again but at the last moment the girl their uh, their child the girl child who was i think four or five years she was peeping out from that door and she entered she entered and she automatically uh, pulled the chair and sit uh, aside the father and uh, his father the expressions while the girl entered and the expressions changed both husband wife uh, turned into you know a little smile on their face and they were just forgetting everything which they were fighting for and the girl uh, just sat uh, near by the uh, father and attached her father and father was not only the father but i was also a little you know i i can't explain those expressions the girl uh, started uh, talking to her father papa aap mere liye chocolate laaye hain papa and after 5 minutes and 5 to 7 minutes the mediation turned into a very very uh, you know uh, realistic film scene that that and that ended up into a, uh, a reunion of family because of that girl's emotions because the girl's touch so we need to need, we need to have a, a different knowledge to understand the language of the uh, parties different body language different gestures the emotion of com- the compassion the affection the love we need to understand we need to understand the uh, expression of aggression also because in 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 i think 50% of cases i can say by, practically by my own experience then that <coughs> the the inner thing is completely entirely different from what they are showing when we are sitting in mediation they are they, initially they are showing that they are against each other and they can't do with uh, they can't live with each other but gradually when we give them uh, sessions after sessions we gradually we together with them they give you a, a very different uh, feeling inside and we have to understand we have to understand the feeling inside there so as a mediator if i if i have those skills with me i can understand that what they are trying to say this is this is for this is for this reason i think everybody is uh, uh, agreeing for that that apart from 40 hours trainings a mediator who is handling uh, family matters matrimony they need some some specific training for that and i would recommend that that for this this for these kind of mediations when we are handling relationship we are handling emotions we are handling every kind of aggression and all we need something something little extra from what we are getting from 40 hours training and at this stage i think uh, i would suggest this this will be my uh, very you know humble suggestion to every mediation center that uh, we can have our elders who have the experience to resolve in these kind of disputes since long they have a rich experience in family uh, dis- handling family disputes and all we can we can call them we can uh, train them we can make, make make our support system with us and the, the of course with the requisite uh, training which i'm uh, uh, which i'm uh, which i'm asking for because it's different when you are handling a commercial dispute you can handle anything because there is no question of culture because there is no question of religion because there is no question of Uh, uh, any uh, any local local thing but we can't we can't do it in a general way in material disputes we have to be very sensitive very uh, uh, stick to our religion stick we need to see the culture of the parties we need to see the religion of the parties we need to see the uh, you know uh, internal criteria of the parties to look in, look to each other with a different scenario so in this conference after learning so many things from uh, all the eminent speakers i would just suggest i would just my request would be that we have to uh, involve such people who are having not not only mediators not only lawyers not only uh, the senior person but senior citizens who are having the experience of these kind of dis- handling uh, these kind of experiences uh, in in their family and as uh, rightly said uh, ma'am kiran gupta uh, that uh, Uh, the the, uh, the compassion and uh, the uh, affection and all we, we are really very difficult they, uh, and she was the expression of kiran gupta ma'am was automatically was showing that she is keen to, uh, to handle this uh, to learn about this and to know about the mediation aspect and role of uh, in uh, matrimonial disputes 
so uh, i will end up with this that aaj in the morning uh, somebody quoted zindagi mein kuch aisa karo ki hawa bhi chalti rahe aur diya bhi jalta rahe as a mediators we have to do this we have to maintain the dignity of the parties we have to maintain the balance as ma'am said mom said that we have to maintain the balance between the between the egos between the needs between the internal uh, interests of the parties thank you so much i i i i am i am really thankful to all the organizers organizers of this uh, uh, conference for giving me this opportunity to speak before such eminent speakers thank you all thank you so much ma'am for sharing your valuable insights with all of us emphasizing on the benefits and relevance of mediation which has to be dealt with in a careful and sensitive manner in emotionally charged matrimonial disputes now since iran ma'am session was interrupted due to a technical glitch ma'am we offer you the platform again for two minutes to continue with your insights on the topic if you would like to oh, i am so touched thank you so much parika for again giving me this opportunity i am sorry first of all being uh, this uh, drive in the glitch so uh, see i i have nothing to say more after uma ma'am and pramila has mentioned the only thing which i was uh, telling you that time that on the scale of emotions uh, negative and positive that's what i was telling you the survey was conducted and the re- us result i will not tell you first i will tell you that what in india they said that okay if there is on the five if there is four negative and one positive in a matrimonial thing i will be able to stay with my husband and i asked other you know this different generation people they said two two three this will be the ratio and then the result in the us was you will be amazed to know the ratio with the negative and positive in a matrimonial tie up that was one is to one and that's where we are lacking one is to one if one positive then one negative it should not be in the sequence but yes that much of appreciation the parties required from their you know opposite spouse and that was we are lacking we are not giving that one is to one but we are happy in four is to one also and that is what we are doing we are dragging dead bodies relations of this dead bodies on our head every day and we are dealing in mediation with those dead relationships where we have four is to one you know positive four negative and one positive see that's what i say and that we don't we don't understand that what the parties are going through how emotionally they are charged what is there in their psychology some people are committing suicide if they are not going through with the mediation so we need to have skills to understand that what is the orientation of the parties four is to one or one is to one and we have to give that to the parties by understanding their underlying interest what is going in their subconscious what is there in their mind so we have to find out that we have to go deep down and beyond the conscious mind we have to enter into the subconscious mind to take out the structure of the conflict and bring it on the table and show it to the people that's what we need and for that for tr training as everybody said not possible not enough to say and if uh, i have been in the hong kong and other places they are providing the ministries of justice in those countries they are providing different trainings you know if suppose investor uh, state mediation different training cross culture different training handling emotions and mediations different training so what i urge because we have uh, three eminent judges and uh, who can change in their you know mediation center this thing does not for the hours training i urge all of you that please we need three more days training to handling emotions how to understand that and how to serve this community more on a different level this is what i urge we need to integrate nlp we need to integrate how to understand the language hypnotic language meta models and different aspects so we need to revise the curriculum we need to add on more for this disputes and i hope that this panel discussion should create a road map for the matrimonial disputes how to handle that and we could generate some good curriculum also we can add on some trainings into this by the court and its mediation thank you so much this is was from my side thank you so much ma'am for your inputs based on your own professional experiences acquainting us with the harsh realities of mediation now i would like to invite the co-chair for our session honorable justice anjali palo judge madhya pradesh high court to share her knowledge on the issue and further enrich the discussion welcome you ma'am the virtual platform is open for your lordship okay my warm good evening to everybody importance of mediation is not a new subject for us we all are aware about it we know that two important pillars of indian societies are 
family and marriage marriage is the process by which two people make their relationship public official and permanent the university as universality of marriage within different society and cultures is attributed to the many basic social and personal functions for which it provides structure it is the joining of two people in a bond that is presumed to last until death but in practice it is often cut short by separation dissolution or other types of disputes today alternative methods of resolving matrimonial disputes are very significant in saving family system <clears throat> which also save times and money such as mediation when there is no agreement between the parties on a topic discussion turn into an dispute argument which is turn result in unresolved discrepancies and ultimate dispute we are now normally taking view that endeavor should be taken to promote conciliation and secure speedy settlement of dispute relating to matrimonial and family dispute huge number of cases are originate due to egos difference differences in temperament lifestyle opinion thoughts etc then majority is coming to the court to get redressal mediation is the effective alternate alternative remedy since it focuses on the non coercive and consensual process nowadays we feel that mediation is become becoming a popular technique law commission of india in its reports had emphasized that by dealing with disputes of family the court should adopt an approach radically differences different forum from that it adopted in ordinary civil proceedings and that it should make reasonable efforts for settlement before the commencement of the trial further it is also the constitutional mandate for speedy disposal of such disputes and to grant quick justice to the litigants the civil courts also insist to the parties to settle their disputes for partition easementry rights boundary disputes through mediation similarly the family courts also prefers that the matrimonial disputes be resolved through mediation we have experienced that sometimes petty issues issues were involved in between the parties the mediation process in provided them a platform to talk freely explain themselves and also identify the main problems in their relationship by protecting confidentiality it is an easy way to sort out the problems among parties by talking and deliberating the mediator by making a party agree on way on any decision should always consider the best interest of the parties mediation allow them to avoid the high financial and emotional cost of their litigation because all relationship problems arose from poor communication mediation is a forum in which a neutral mediator facilitate parties to avoid the risk of trial and decreases the stressful conflict in last decades as my early speaker spoke that in our social system the society has given more importance to settle the family and matrimonial disputes through our elders and heads of the society society also opted to settle the family and matrimonial disputes by way of gram panchayat we cannot ignore that the matrimonial disputes harm the mental status and future of the children a research by baker mcgenzy in 2004 reported that children of divorce show higher level of externalizing behaviors which are aggressive problematic and impulsive in nature they show internalizing behaviors such as depression anxiety and withdrawal as well mediation more often that than not result in joint custody benefiting the children with a continued future with both parents when the parties go beyond aggression it is much more a comfortable alternative compared to appearing before a judge mediation could be a best and effective way to resolve the family dispute and bring the parties in win win situation thank you for involving me in this kind of program thank you again
thank you so much your lordship for comprehensively apprising us about the entire process of mediation and its importance with respect to the time effort and the cost that it saves especially in family disputes we hope that endeavors would be taken to promote this alternate mode of resolution now i would like to humbly invite the esteemed co-chair for today's session honorable justice mr sandeep mehta judge rajasthan high court to enlighten us with his words it is an honor to have you here with us the virtual pl platform is open for your lordship now thank you parika my lord honorable justice karol sister justice anjuli palo distinguished speakers i am first of all thankful to the delhi university and the supreme court mcpc for having invited me on this virtual platform on this important topic of mediation and its role in family disputes and matrimonial disputes i will frankly concede that i am one of those few of the participants who has not had the good fortune of having had that training the formal training i would say but informally i have had some experiences in the subject of mediation which i would like to share with the august gathering since we are already running out of time i'll just share my three experiences which i consider are really relevant for the discussion at hand the first instance i recollect is during my lawyer days we have been for the present focusing purely on matrimonial disputes but there is yet another stream of litigation which has cropped up in the recent times that is the litigation between the parents and the children owing to the senior citizens maintenance act now i was engaged in one such dispute when i was a lawyer the application had been filed by the father and he was pleading for the ouster of the son the only son from the residential premises so the son approached me and i talked to him asked him as to what actually was the background of the dispute he said sir there is no difference whatsoever between my parents and myself probably because of some incident their emotions were hurt and they have been misguided into fighting uh, piling this application so i told my client that on the next day when we enter the court the first thing you will do is go ahead touch your father's feet and tell him i am sorry and that power of seeking shama from your elders was immediately the effect was immediately visible in the court that both father and son started crying they embraced each other and the matter was settled so as madam ramanathan has said that the importance of perceptions and emotions how you treat them in a mediation that is very important the second incident which i'll be sharing is probably the highlight of my experience at mediation the matter came up in the court wherein the spouses were fighting over a right to residence in the shared household the husband and the wife were embroiled in as many as 12 to 13 cases owing to matrimonial disputes which were pending for almost 8 to 9 years one of the orders which was passed by the competent court in the domestic violence act proceedings came before me and the husband and wife were both present in the court i just i like to vividly recollect the experiences which i had in while intervening intervening in that matter straight off the thought came that why not attempt mediation so the lawyers told me sir we have already attempted mediation in the district court in the magistrate court in the sessions court and once even in the high court but all failed so i thought that why shouldn't i make a attempt the wife the husband and wife the the one important fact was that they did not have any child no offspring from the marriage so i first asked the wife as to what she precisely wanted she said i don't have any problem at all he should give me i am a rajput lady i am not going to remarry i should be given a place to reside 
and a reasonable sum of money so that i can maintain myself then i asked the husband that why you are doing this why you are continuing this litigation why don't you agree to her offer so the husband said she is demanding too much then again i reverted back to the lady and she said that the man has a small house little distance from the center of the city he can give me that and he can can give me a particular amount and i will be happy then i asked the husband whether he is prepared for that his outright reaction was no the next question i put to the husband was that how long have you been fighting he said that is almost 8 to 9 years how much amount have you paid in fees to lawyers must be running into lakhs then the next suggestion i or next picture i showed to the man was that do you know that with this state of affairs how long you will continue to fight maybe another 5 years 10 years and how much amount will you pay the lawyers he was little shaken then i asked him that your wife already has a right of residence in your house what is the value of the house so i was told that it is around about 1.5 crores and because of that order of right of residence there had been physical fights between the wife and the mother in law and couple more couple of more ladies who were residing with the husband maybe his bua or something like that and cases of assault and beating had also been registered so i told him that what is more important finding a peace of mind getting your property freed from this interference or this amount of 15 lakh or odd she is asking in a house which she is otherwise also entitled to the as i told him that despite the fact that the mediation has failed you just think over these things you just keep on churning these such, these facts which i which the court has told you and come back after a few days one stark observation the husband was there in the court with his mother and his bua and the lady of course was there and all the ladies were wearing dark colored clothes on the next day i also told the lady that your demand seems to be a little high you also please think of reducing it a little bit you are not peaceful with this fight so a little bit of consideration in money may settle the things and may provide you a way out of this unhappy situation on the next day the husband came and said i am ready to part with the house please request her to consider reducing the amount which she is demanding and the lady immediately agreed i immediately fixed the matter on the next day and asked them to come out with the agreement and the best part of the observation which i could make in the court was that on the next day all the ladies were wearing colored clothes they were bright and cheerful in those proceedings before the high court which were arising out of an offshoot of the domestic violence application the entire dispute was settled almost 12 litigations were which were pending for 8 to 9 year 9 years they were finished by the single order the husband and wife parted ways of course that was unfortunate but we could not save it the things were the writing was on the wall now the question which arises is that this was a very simple scenario which the court created before the parties why couldn't the mediator do it what was the difference why the parties had to fight for 9 10 years and indulge in so many cases before they could be shown the correct picture that is for the academics academicians and the scholars to find out where the mediators are not able to deliver the goods but the court initiated mediations often succeed better the third incident a very small incident an application for pre arrest bail came up in the court it was pending for almost 
eight months. And in the previous proceedings, the girl had demanded a sum of rupees 80 lakhs for settlement. The boy as well as the girl both were IT professionals. They were doing very well. So again, the mediation proceedings had failed. Again, I took it, took it as a challenge and thought, just give it a shot. So I asked the girl, what are you going to gain if this boy goes behind the bars? So the immediate reaction was, no, sir, he has spoiled my life. This, that. So then I told her the next fact. All right, I will reject his application for anticipatory bail. Tomorrow he will surrender before my magistrate and he will be released on bail. What difference would it make? He still will not go behind bars. And do you know how long your uh, how long will it take for you to even make an attempt to get him punished? The boy was all along saying, I have no problem with the girl. I am still ready to resume the matrimony. He was very hesitant on the proposal of divorcing the girl, despite the fact that the FIR had been lost. So then I told the girl, you just think over it. We'll post the matter after lunch. And you just think over it that this case, even if the bail application is decided today against the accused, your criminal case will carry on for almost 10, 12 years. By that time, you will be past the age of remarriage and all will be lost. And uh, the August gathering will be surprised to know that in the post-lunch session, the girl came up and told that I don't want a single penny. What I want is my documents should be returned immediately and I should get a decree of divorce in seven days. And that precisely was the order passed that they should file an application under Section 13B. The period of six months would be relaxed and the family court will pass the order. So by that simple intervention, the things were settled. So my submission with whatever limited experience I have in the matters of mediation, my thinking is that the different kind of training, the different kind of perspective while handling the matrimonial matters needs to be inculcated in the mediators so that we can have more fruitful results to this wonderful mode of dispute resolution. Thank you. Namaskar. Thank you so much, Your Lordship, for offering wonderful insights in the field of mediation and how to better implement it in today's society, drawing on your various relevant professional experiences. Now, I would like to humbly invite the respected chair for today's session, Honorable Mr. Justice Sanjay Karol, Chief Justice Patna High Court. It is an honor to have you here with us. The virtual platform is open for your lordship now. Thank you, Ms. Gupta. Uh, good evening, uh, ladies and gentlemen. On the panel, uh, we have uh, Ms. Uh, Dr. Professor Gupta, Ms. Uh, Majid, uh, Ms. Ramanathan, uh, Dr. Acharya, my esteemed sister, uh, Honorable Justice uh, Palo, and uh, my esteemed brother, uh, Honorable Justice Sandeep Mehta. Being the last speaker and that to a defag end in the session, we are all, already running over time. I can only do uh, no more than say, I agree with all of them. There cannot be any difference. We don't need a mediation on that because the issue is so sensitive and uh, we are all alive to it. And we are in total uh, agreement with the views expressed by all of you. May I just only add uh, two, three things. To begin with, uh, I must uh, thank uh, the organizers and giving us this uh, great opportunity. Uh, on, I believe that uh, the others are also online and I uh, must also thank them for uh, being with us at this point in time, they are tired, they are, would be definitely tired. I must thank uh, Faculty of Law, University of Delhi, Delhi School of Public Policy and Governance, Institution of Eminence, and uh, the Mediation and Conciliation Project Committee, Honorable the Supreme Court of India. I, before I forget, I must uh, also request the panelists, uh, the, not only the panelists, but also the organizers to shift this platform from digital to physical in Bihar. I welcome you, all of you to come to Patna and 
uh, I welcome all of you be our guest. Uh, moving forward, uh, I must say one thing that uh, laws are already in place, mechanism is already in place. Only thing is whether we have the will to implement, that's really what is in my concerned view required. Uh, the issue in hand is uh, role of uh, mediation in family and uh, matrimonial disputes. Uh, family disputes can be with regard to interpersonal relationship, father and son, mother and uh, daughter, wife, husband and wife. And uh, it can be matrimonial dispute, it can be inheritance related dispute and issues, and it can be business uh, related issues. And as far as the matrimonial is concerned, of course, there can be interpersonal between the spouses, it can be between the, amongst the children, and it can be also, as uh, someone mentioned, amongst the elders, elders and the spouses. But let me tell you that uh, the dispute is no longer related to dowry, so to say, the traditional sense, what it used to be at one point of time. It has expanded. I'll just give you three illustrations. Then I move on further. Uh, we must, uh, yeah, while agreeing with uh, my as well speakers and more specifically Madam uh, Raman, uh, Ramanathan, uh, we must be not only general neutral, but also gender sensitive. That is the need of the hour. That is one big challenge, I think, the mediators and the whole justice delivery system has uh, uh, to deal with. Uh, also, in my considered view, and I've been very, very categorical about it, uh, we are uh, the whole approach uh, of mediation uh, is looked upon uh, as though it is metro sense, uh, metro specific. It is not so. Uh, we are dealing with uh, more than uh, four crore cases which are pending in, in India, and therefore we have to. Uh, travel beyond the metros because originally this concept of mediation it was all along there in our uh, ethos and uh, in our system but somehow we have uh, not been able to uh, get this idea uh, from the uh, out of the mind of the general uh, people that is the stakeholders everyone feels that it has been thrusted upon us from uh, outside has been brought from US and uh, UK and it has been thrusted upon us. So we have to be as stakeholders also be sensitized about this aspect and we have to also change uh, our uh, language, if I may use that expression, uh, so I may be allowed to say so, uh, in uh, undertaking this process of uh, mediation. Because everything when we talk of mediation is only in English language, the concepts are foreign, they are alien, they are not, uh, they are not uh, specific to the needs of the people. After all, we cannot forget that India is not Delhi, Bombay, and Madras. It is uh, the hinterland, so to say, where uh, the major litigation is there. I uh, cannot uh, agree uh, any more than, uh, yes, we have to adopt an individual uh, and case-specific uh, approach in dealing with the, the issues which arise for consideration. Now, I have, I'll cut short and say, what are the challenges before us? Uh, the challenges before us is uh, the huge pendency and how to curtail that, uh, use mediation as a tool uh, or a mechanism to reduce that uh, pendency. Not only that, uh, very few we see when we compare the population of India and uh, the population uh, of uh, uh, the cases which are pending in the court, we find that there are huge, huge disputes which are lying, so to say, on the flanks, about to be filed at any point of time. So rather, I would not only say that we should concentrate on uh, uh, mediation insofar as pending matters are concerned, but also pre-litigation mediation is uh, what need to be focused at this point in time. I, one uh, huge challenge also comes from uh, the bar. We need to be, we'll have to find solutions. We have to sensitize the bar 
and we also also have to sensitize the litigant because the litigant at one point of time has given fee he is a for him he doesn't know this concept of uh, uh, media process of mediation or the existence or establishment of this process of uh, mediation so he wants uh, uh, what do you say in uh, in colloquial language a fence law he doesn't want a compromise he's looking for a fence law he's come to court he's paid fee and the lawyer uh, unfortunately uh, will not allow the dispute to be resolved because he is his bread and butter so to say is uh, more, is based on uh, his uh, uh, litigant coming to him on daily basis now this is the hard reality let us not shy away from it and therefore we have to this is a huge huge uh, challenge and uh, as i said that uh, lack of uh, uh, sensitization uh, and sensitiveness uh, uh, on the part of the judges also it needs to be done because they are looking for uh, judgments which would uh, help them uh, get uh, their acs recorded so that's one uh, big uh, challenge now uh, coming to solutions i'll be very very brief i have already said that uh, we have to be uh, we have to sensitize uh, both the litigant as also the bar we have to deal we have to pursue this program in the language of the litigant and also in the language of uh, the stakeholder that is the bar and the bench and uh, we have to in my considered view we have to also to expand uh, what you call uh, uh, the concept of a mediator you need not necessarily have trained mediators you have to now time has come for us to engage the other stakeholders in the society as it was in earlier days panch parmeshwar we all used to go there now therefore my considered view would be uh, i am talking as a panelist uh, uh, to also expand uh, and engage a lot of ngos and community community based uh, uh, as uh, associations uh, and uh, communities must be engaged and involved uh, that is all that that has the advantage of a deterrent of a litigation also arising of a dispute also in fact and uh, we must uh, have a uh, focus on pre litigation mediation the legal services authority needs to be have, needs to have a more more proactive uh, approach uh, in and a role to say uh, in this i will uh, give you three instances now which i have been uh, referring to earlier the expanding nature of disputes uh, believe you me when i am saying so i have uh, come across an agreement where two young people today india is just youth who are in the age group of just 30% of india is just about 16 to 20 years of age and uh, 50% of india is just about uh, less than uh, 40 if i'm correct on the figures uh, approximately that much so they have new disputes now which are emerging and i know of a case where uh, the dispute was that uh, two young uh, children a boy and a girl they were living together and uh, they had uh, thought of uh, getting married so they had kept a pet and the dispute was uh, when they parted they decided not to settle down permanently in life they reduced into an agreement uh, who will take care of the pet so the pet was a dispute between the two young children and uh, the agreement was that for 6 months they would uh, you know each one of them would keep so when they parted then uh, there was a lot of counseling which was done and uh, the matter was had come to the such a fore that it was take it was about to be taken to the court and in, incidentally i was uh, knowing one of the uh, one of the uh, child so i counseled him and then also counseled him and eventually the matter was uh, resolved with the pet being custody of the custody of the pet being handed over to one of <laughs> one of the person so these are the niche expanding areas of disputes which are uh, which we have to you know uh, take care of that is one another thing is i'll tell you when i say that we have to curtail uh, litigation uh, 
I will. I was. Uh, I come from Simla, and in uh, we had expanded uh, the role of uh, legal services authority in uh, there, and I was the chairman of the legal services authority. And we uh, there is a there is one district Kullu in uh, Himachal Pradesh. Now, when we expanded the activity of legal services authority and made people realize uh, their rights. And uh, under the various laws, and especially the matrimonial laws, we found that uh, suddenly there was a huge spurt of uh, uh, matrimonial litigation, uh, which had uh, come to the court. So we studied the reason. Now the reason was this: that uh, there there was a system of uh, the parties' illiteracy was there, and uh, the parties would go to the court and the uh, Stamp vendor there, or the deed writer, would just on a piece of paper type out the divorce, uh, the terms of the <laughs> divorce, uh, uh, not only the terms of the agreement and uh, the give them a divorce by uh, by just uh, reducing it to writing without the judicatory process uh, of the court. So when suddenly we made them uh, realize that they have been not guided properly. We found that uh, not only there was uh, proper uh, the parties took recourse to law, but also it helped resolve uh, disputes of inheritance because though that paper was just uh, nothing but just a piece of paper which um, which had to be shredded, so a lot of uh, disputes got uh, resolved. Uh, another thing I and uh, these are the two instances which I wanted to give. Uh, I can see that out of uh, seven panelists, five are women. Uh, Madam, I must take pride on two facts. Uh, I must use this opportunity to let you know that uh, uh, on the last uh, examination which we have held for uh, the uh, judicial services, uh, entry of the, um, into the Bihar judicial service, uh, we have, uh, we have, Selected and appointed 341 uh, candidates, the, the biggest uh, uh, batch ever anywhere in the country. And out of that, 154 are women. I must uh, share that with you. Uh, Sir, we, we take the uh, baton in this case, the leading baton. In the, our last, sorry to interrupt, sir, in our last recruitment, we had 124 out of 190. Oh, great. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> but, sorry but, to interrupt, sir. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, I apologize. Okay, but this, I, couldn't, yeah, I just couldn't get it. Uh, uh, let it go, sir. Uh, 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 but in a, in a place like Bihar, uh, to get uh, 154 uh, judicial officers, incredible. officers incredible. Uh, is... is, uh, is uh, incredible. Absolutely. And one thing I must tell you, uh, all the lady panelists, please, uh, in Bihar, uh, when we are talking of socio-economic uh, background, let me tell you one thing. During COVID, uh, I got a study conducted. 40 lakh migrants returned to Bihar. And uh, all of us were holed up in four walls of rooms. One room, two rooms, three rooms, depending upon the houses. And all of us were traumatized. All of us required counseling. Certainly, let us admit that. And I got a study conducted as to whether there was any increase in crime against women or not. And I, my research showed that there was no crime increase of crime, corresponding increase of crime. So then I was not satisfied. I said that let me just go and check up whether it is being reported. There can be cases or there should be cases where crime is, I mean, it's difficult to fathom that 40 lakh people have come back home, all of us hold up and there's no increase in crime against women. And uh, I then got a study conducted that uh, it was not a case that women were not reporting or that it was, they were reporting and it was not registered. So Bihar, let me tell you, uh, so to say, is one place where women in particular are respected. The disputes are maybe there, 
of matrimony in, in, in the, uh, of the nature of matrimony, but they are less. They are more uh, arising out of uh, uh, sharing of property and uh, land because we have less land. Huge one tenth of India lives in Bihar, and we have uh, the mass land is very very less as compared to Madhya Pradesh from where brother comes uh, or other places. So one dispute, uh, uh, because we have been not able to settle one dispute with regard to the land, it raises uh, multiple disputes, more so in relation to the crime, uh, which is hardcore crime. So that is what uh, I need not emphasize, the need and the importance of mediation. And it has to be, as I said, uh, fast-tracked. It has to be gender neutral and uh, also gender sensitive and uh, we must uh, engage all the uh, stakeholders and more so community based stakeholders so with these words thank you very much for your time please thank you thank you so much your lordship for uprising, uprising us with certain intricate details of mediation and its ever expanding meaning beautifully capturing the entire essence of the discussion coupled with, of course, your valuable suggestions, such as the need for being more gender neutral, more gender sensitive for better justice delivery. With this, we reached the end of the session. It was indeed a thought provoking one and instilled more mindfulness on the issue of mediation. Now, I would like to call upon my respected moderator, Professor Kiran Gupta, to share concluding remarks and present the vote of thanks for the session. Over to you, ma'am. Thanks, Parika. Thanks to all the speakers. Uh, as I have said in the very beginning, I'm repeating the same, that marriage is an institution and it is an institution of trust, tolerance, and mutual understanding. Matrimonial relationship demands mutual trust, regard, love, and affection with reason reasonable adjustment between the parties. Adjustment has to be there. Husband and wife need not to agree on every issue. They have the right to disagree. Conflicts in matrimonial relationship are normal and expected. They are bound to happen. They are bound to be there because two persons who live in a different family, different culture, maybe different uh, following different uh, uh, practices, they are united. So there need to be bound to be some conflict between them. Marital conflicts not confined to difference of opinion, rather it is a series of poorly handled events which deeply damage the marital relationship. These small, small disputes, if they are not properly handled, they will result in disruption of the marital relation. So the need is to handle these disputes between the parties to the marriage properly on time. Divorce terminates marital union and dissolves bond of matrimony between married couples. The resolution of family conflict requires special emotions and procedure designed, which should be designed to help people in trouble to reconcile and resolve their differences and where necessary to obtain assistance. Conserve a marriage and not to disrupt the family life is the rule and should be the rule because disruption of marriage life affect mostly the children. The most adverse effect it has is on the children of the parties. So this is the need of the hour that we should dissolve, resolve the matrimonial dispute in time and amicably. And it is irrespective of the fact whether the dissolution of that dispute will result in resolution of that dispute will result in conservation of the marriage or disruption of the marriage. Of course, our try should be, our intention should be to retain, to protect, to conserve the marriage. But if it is not possible, let it be dissolved but the dispute must be resolved. Continuation of the dispute will 
keep on damaging the parties, the society, the children of the family and all the members of the family. With these words, since we are lagging behind the time, I would like to express my gratitude to all the speakers of the day who have given their deep insight into the importance of mediation or the role of mediation in resolving family and matrimonial disputes. Honorable Justice Sanjay Karolji, the chair of the session, I fully agree with you that there is a need to sensitize the stakeholders, the parties, the litigant, the judges, the uh, lawyers, as well as the mediators. Without that, that mediation will be useless, will be, have no effect. We must sensitize them. We must see to it that lawyers are not misusing their knowledge for the sake of earning money and misguiding the litigants. In most of the cases, it is seen that mediation fails because of the lawyers. Whenever a matrimonial dispute arose, chota sa matrimonial dispute, choti si fight, and a party visit a lawyer, the lawyer will give a long list. Of, you can say a package of cases he is going to file on behalf of the wife or on behalf of the husband. And he will say that I will file these, 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 and these cases. And the package is 5 lakhs. Pay me 2 lakhs, 50,000 today and 2 lakhs, 50,000 after the decision of the case. And you will get the relief. And these are the cases I will file and everything will be taken care of by the lawyers. They don't even want mediation and they don't even actually permit the litigants to resolve their dispute by mediation. That mindset of the lawyer needed to be changed, especially in matrimonial cases. I fully agree with you for, for that, sir, and we are very thankful that you have given such uh, a deep insight into the process of mediation and the need of mediation and how it will solve the problem of the society, especially the matrimonial problem. Honorable, Honorable Justice Sandeep Mehtaji, your advice to us are very, very important. I again fully agree with you that we say that we are sending the dispute, matrimonial dispute for pre-litigation mediation, but that is not sufficient. The reason, there are lots of reasons. We should not, all of us know why it failed, but when the judge takes up the role of mediator, I have seen it in number of cases that disputes are resolved within one or two hearing. It may be that people rely more on judges than on mediator. Or maybe the mediators are not performing their duty properly. And that is why the, the litigants have no faith on them. But the moment the judge intervene, within two or three hearings, the parties reconcile their dispute and the case is solved. Honorable Justice Anjali Paloji, we are highly thankful to you for your insightful discourse which you have given to us. You have comprehensively apprised us about the process of mediation and how it is beneficial for us, the benefit of, benefit of mediation, that it is cost effective, it is a consensual press process, it is a easy way to sort, sort out the differences. We are highly thankful to all our three speak, guest speakers of the day, Madam Iram Mazidji, Madam Uma Ramanathan, who has shared, both of them have shared their personal experiences with us. And you know, we learn more that from experiences than from theory. So the, the insight, the, the, uh, you can say, the exposure of the actual process of mediation 
and compri comprehensively apprising us about those aspects the in-depth discussion you have made about your real expense, uh, experiences has really benefited us and will definitely benefit our student also. Dr. Pramila Acharya ji, we are highly thankful to you for your valuable, insightful discourse. Thank you all, all the speakers, the co-chairs, the chair, Justice Sanjay Kero, we are highly obliged to you. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you, all of you. Please, thank you. Thank you, sir. I again thank all of you for joining us today and making the session a huge success. Thank you so much. And now I would request all the participants to kindly fill up the feedback form for the certificates. Thank you and have a very good day.